Well, welcome to Monday's Coffee with Job. Uh, Coffee with Job, we've been going through the book of Job. This is now, I think, number 131. So we've been doing it a lot. Just five minutes each, around that anyway, each morning during the weekday. And we're now on to Job chapter 40. And again, it's a very strange passage. So it could be about a vegetarian monster. Let's, let's read it. Chapter 40, verse 15. Look at Behemoth which I made along with you and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar, the sinews of its thighs are close-knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like rods of iron. It ranks first among the works of God, yet its, mo- its maker can approach it with his sword. The hills bring out their produce and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plant it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotus, the lotuses conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river does not alarm it. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. Can anyone capture it by the eyes or trap it and pierce its nose? Now, the first question about this, and also as we go into chapter 41 with the picture of Leviathan, of which more during the week, is are they real? Or is this some kind of fantasy pre- creature. So Behemoth, the fiercest of the land animals, the greatest of the beasts, the great, the first of the works of God, referring back to Genesis 1, 21. The creation, first of all, was the great sea creatures. Behemoth means great creature. Is it a hippo? Is it a crocodile? Is it a water buffalo? Or is it a mythical creature? Uh, Its diet is vegetarian. Verses 16 to 18, it's extremely powerful. Verse 19, super strength. Only its maker can approach it. And I don't know, you see, here's, my, here's the difficulty with this. If Behomoth is really just a hippo and Leviathan is a crocodile or similar, it does seem a very strange way, and how will I put it, um, a not very dramatic way to, to finish this whole book and to finish the Lord's speech. So some have argued that these are mythical monsters. And again, that's possible, but what if God is using uh, almost like a real creature and a mythical monster to teach us something else? What this has to do with, remember right at the beginning, this had to do with Satan. And the argument is that Leviathan is, is Satan. And it does have to do with death. Job wanted to die, his children died, his servants died. Well, what if Behemoth is just a symbol or a picture for death? And I think that works a whole lot better for lots and lots of different reasons. First of all, if we are talking, if we're asking what does God do about these dreadful situations, situations that it's the power of Satan and death is just so horrific. I mean, we live in this creation and death comes. I mean... Here in Australia, they were mourning the death of Rodney Marsh, and then Shane Warne died, and Shane Warne's a superhero to so many people here, and he's only 53. Think of how many people are dying in Ukraine, or people dying of COVID, or people dying of cancer, or or so many different causes of, of death. Death is such a horrible thing. But how do we get to the position where we can say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Well, we can get to that position through the Lord defeating death, through the Lord subduing death, and he does that through Jesus Christ. And I think that makes a whole lot more sense in the light of the whole of this book. Our last great enemy is death. And yet, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. All right, let's come back tomorrow to look at Leviathan. God bless you and see you then. Bye.